BBC Coventry and Warwickshire, the Bellamy Brothers, and let your love flow. Now, Coventry is often synonymous with Sky Music, isn't it? And there's arguably one man to thank for all of that, the King of Sky himself, Prince Buster. He's credited with shaping the entire genre of music. He sadly passed away last year, of course, but his legacy is kept alive, not only with his music, but the music of his son, Sultan Ali. And I'm thrilled to say, Sultan joins me in the studio. How you doing, my friend? Great, wonderful to be in the UK, finally. You are looking so cool. You're sat there at the moment. You've got the you got the shades on. Oh man, I'm so happy to be with you. I still know with my good friends, Christine Staple, Never Staple, the great legendary child. Oh, we're I, talking to the microphone. Sometimes. I could never be in a better uh, confrontation of our families and friends. Are oh, beautiful. Great. Oh well, listen. Great to uh, great to uh, have you here, and great to have you in the UK for the first time. So, what have you been getting up to since you were here? Rehearsals, getting ready for this big splash with Scam Out. Come out to go see Scam Out. I'm going to be there with the legendary Charlie Algonier and Heptones. Please come out my first time in the UK, and I'm overly elated. Oh, well, look, well, look, we're going to talk about your career in a few minutes and this uh, brilliant uh, this brilliant uh, piece of music that you've given me as well and uh, and your version of Pride and Joy. That's but we've got... Song that we did, yeah. Oh, we've got to talk about your dad, though. We've got to talk about your dad, legendary Foundation. Prince Buster. What was that like for you growing up in your house? I can imagine what the music was, uh, was like back in the day. Oh, man, trust me. My father... Blast music 24-7. I can remember as a little boy, about four or five years old, Washington Gardens and Sundays. My father used to stay home because he was busy like from Monday to Saturday. And Sunday was a, like a family day. And he'd get up, get up in the morning time and everything. And he played a whole bunch of this classic music that touched my heart, like the great Sam Cooke. He was the man who turned me on to Sam Cooke. And I, I can remember the particular song called Tammy. Yes. And it just blew me away. I was making noise. My brother's playing, jumping, and screaming. But somehow that Sam Cooke's sweet, uh, Ever Vessens vocals has stayed with me up to this day. And I met his brother, who was LSE Cook, just passed. I want to say condolences to Mrs. Cook in Chicago, wherever you are. We are family. Your husband told me to call him uncle. So he's like a nephew. I'm a nephew to you. So condolences to you. Sam Cooke was the man that, to me, is a teacher. He was before Barry Gordy, before Motown. He was Motown before there was a Motown. Well, a, well another and legend. And the music touched me, and ever since, it just rest, rest is just history. Oh, so let's let's get back to your dad. What was he like? How would you describe him to you? Uh, a very we've seen... creative person. He was unconventional because, remember, growing up in Jamaica, Kingston, poor, not having money, yes. having ambition, having aim, having vision, but still you need a little finance to catapult yes. it, so to speak. So... The people loved him in Western Kingston. And because he was like from the people, he had great goals and aspiration, the people supported him. And when you were a kid growing up with all of this surrounding you mm -hmm. and, and your dad's music and all this adulation, what was, the, what was that like for you? Did you? Were you aware how famous your dad was and what, yes, and what a legend yes, he was? Yes, because I remember like hanging out with my dad, driving to the cities, going to the bank, or walking with him. If he had to walk from this shop that's like Orange Street to the bank down Barker's Bank down King Street, just like back up maybe a 20 minutes right walk, he would stop like every five or ten seconds. Somebody want to say, hi, Prince Wagwan, <laughs> Prince, hey, hey. The, the, the cart man driving the cart, the bus driver, the taxi man, the, the man hustling some cane or some peppermint or some kind of peanut on the street. Always wanted his attention. He was a people person, man, coming from the ghetto and everything, and made a name for himself. So he was total love. Socially, he was like larger than life. And what was that for? You? What was that like for you and the family growing I, I up was around? In, I was in awe, and it, it catapulted me and touched me. And that's why I'm in the business also, because seeing the adulation he got from the people and seeing the creativity and traveling around the world, and everybody just like, uh, and even the even the president, the prime minister. Yes. Want to speak to Prince Buster? I mean, he was a bigger than life personality. Plus, when he met up with Muhammad Ali, you know, I mean, it was just like wow, just jumped through the roof because he became friends of Cassius Clay, then who yes. became Muhammad Ali. Took him to uh, Chicago, met Minister Minister, and then he, be, he became a Ali because my name is Sultan Ali. I mean, he was just like bigger than life. Even the Prime Minister wanted to, uh, Prince, please bring Ali around, you know. <laughs> And was he aware, though? Was he aware? Because he sounds to me like a very humble man. Yes. But was he, he aware? he was that big, he always said he came from the ghetto and he came from the humble beginnings and the donkey people, so to speak. So he kept it uh, low profile because our office was still in Western Kingston, Orange Street, still today. Oh, wow. So he always kept his feet on the ground? Yes. 
And what's this like for you being in the UK for the first time, especially Coventry? I mean, let's be let's talk well, about Coventry. Well, finally, I'm here. I mean, I've been wanting to get here for the longest, but through some of the stuff, it didn't work out. But when Miss Christine Staple called me, inboxed me one night, and said, "We're thinking about bringing you across to the the pond, so to speak." And I said, "Why? Yes, we're doing scam out and everything." I said, "Oh, that sounds like a great, wonderful idea." But I've been wanting to come, and then her husband, I know about him from specials in the whole nine yards. So I said, it would be a great idea. And I saw him on the David Letterman show performing my father's classic song, Al Capone, with a Tommy gun machine in his hand. <laughs> I, I mean, that's just classic. So he, uh, they have been a beautiful people, beautiful host and everything, and I'm just totally lady. Can't wait to smash down on the stage oh, this Sunday. Oh, brilliant. Well, look, this leads me nicely into uh, playing this, uh, this next song, and you've chosen it. So uh, tell me why you've chosen this next song from your dad. Prince Buster. What, what made you want to hear this song? Well, Al Capone, that was a song that made my father famous in the UK, bar none. Madness is a great song and everything, but the foundation, the root, was Al Capone. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Are you all right to stay there for a few minutes? Thank you. We'll talk about your music soon, but let's get that famous song on for you next on BBC Coventry and Warwickshire. The place you live. We're still a brilliant city. Some fantastic place. I still love all the people who live here. And it made Coventry what it is today. The stories you share. When I first came here, I was surprised to see the hoses. I didn't think they were hoses. I thought they were factories. Because the smoke coming up the top and it was cold. I was wearing an overcoat in August. I got looks that was out of this world. The music you love. BBC Coventry and Warwickshire. Song at Scam Out. Come out, y'all. <laughs> you've, you've just scared me to death with that. You've probably just scared half the audience, Sultan. Please. I want to do my, that so My weary heart. Oh. 
BBC Coventry, Al Warwickshire, Prince Buster, Al Capone. Of course, uh, uh, we've joined on the on the show this afternoon by Sultan Ali. Uh, how does it make you feel to hear that song, by the way? Oh, it takes me back way back to short pants days in <laughs> Kingston, Jamaica, <laughs> with a beautiful song with all them great musicians. I mean, trust, you don't get no better than that. That's the foundation of the whole thing. That's the song that gave my father prominence in the UK. Oh. Madness is great and everything, but the first cut is always the deepest. And the first cut was... Al Capone, special as Mr. Never call it, Gangsta! Oh, but I'm also, and I'm, I'm, it's so great. I should mention, by the way, we've got Nev out there, Nev Staple, another legend as well. It's just absolutely fantastic. They listen to this interview as well. Seems fitting that they're yes, with you definitely. whilst we're having this chat Very as much well. appropriate. Um, what would you say? We're going to talk about your career now, but mm. what would you say before we get into that? It has been the biggest honour that's been bestowed on your dad. So many people have covered the tunes. Uh, he's received loads of honours. What would you say has been the biggest uh, pat on the back for him? Wow, it's, there's so much to count. I mean, Suggs gave him much respect. Jules Holland show and everything. The specials. But when I saw my father made uh, after his, uh, his death, the obituary on in the Economist, yeah, the Economist ma- magazine in the states, I was so w- I, w- I went wow. I didn't know that. I mean, Economist was that hip to pick up Prince Buster. They did a big spread on the Billboard and all these great magazines. So I'm saying, finally he's getting his credit because a lot of what people know about Bob Marley and everything, but the music preceded Bob Marley. Yes, you see, and finally he's getting his credit, even though he's passed. We say it posthumously, but it's better late than never. And I'm here to keep the legacy going, and we're getting a smash. Well, he would be so proud of you. And what did he say to you, by the way, when you said you wanted to get into the music industry? What did he say? When I was born, in, I had no choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I mean, have any choice remember, at all. I'm from that sperm. Yes. That sperm to touch that egg and fertilize that egg. So it's in my <laughs> DNA, in my deoxyribonucleic no acid. And, and I had what no did, choice. And what did he say with your music? What did he used to say about your music when he heard it? Oh, you, you were saying, what they call me Danny. There's a song I must tell you about. Let me be clear about this. My father wrote a song about. Me, my brother, my sister, my mother, about 1964, it's called Danny, Dane, and Lorraine. Right. My Jamaican name was Don, Donald Campbell, okay? And that song touched my heart. My father got all the great classic songs, but if you should ask me which is the most favorite of mine, it would be Danny, Dane, and Lorraine. Why? Oh. Because it's personalized about me, my brother, and my sister, and my mother. Oh, that's so lovely. That's so lovely. I will have to track that down. That's one I'm not familiar with. Danny, Dan and Lorraine. Now, let's talk about this. So let's talk about Pride and Joy. Uh, And uh, this is, uh, of course, an update of Marvin Gaye's classic. We talked about this uh, a few moments ago. What made you decide to cover this one? Well, I'll tell you what. I've been singing in South Central Los Angeles for about 30 years, jamming when I was in college, working for the college, went to UCLA, South of Scottish Political Science. And, uh, And the weekends, I used to jam to the same blues progression. And I love Marvin Gaye. Like I said, I'm from the Sam Cooke School. And yeah. when I hear Marvin Gaye, Al Green, all them singers who came after Sam Cooke, they owe a debt of gratitude to Sam Cooke. Sam paved the way for all of them. And I could hear Sam influences his phrasing, the way he bends his notes and everything. And I say, you know what? When I heard Marvin Gaye singing again, I said, listen, Sam, we read had a big influence on Marvin. And I just decided to record a song, change the chord structure a little bit, and put my test and flavor. And, kept, and I kept the scare riff also. With a raised nine chord, it sounded a little jazzy, but everything is there. So it was all wonderful. I met Marvin Gaye's son, Marvin the Third. Went up in Hollywood Hills, met Barry Gordy's sister, Anna Gaye, who was married to Marvin. And they heard a track. I to give him respect and credit for that because Marvin is also a big influence because he's like another Sam Cooke in my book. Oh, it's a, it's a wonderful tribute. So you're in the country just for a few more days. Yeah, I mean, in the month, I'm out, I'm out of here. Oh, well, we're going to miss you. So uh, you've had a great experience. Skarmouth as well. What can, what can anybody expect to, uh, is going to be hearing you performing at Skarmouth? Well, they're going to hear the classics. All my dad classics. Plus, they're going to hear my original song, Beautiful Angel. They're going to hear Al Capone, Shaking Up Orange Street, Wine and Grind, Rough Rider, Time Longer Than Rope. And I got the legendary Charlie Argonne, the man who played a lot of those records. Sat out there, yeah. Playing on them records, harmonica. And my favorite song, Danny, Dana Lauren. He played harmonica on the song in 1964 or something like that with the great Lester Sterling from the Scatterlights on the alto. So he's just legendary people and it's all good and good. Oh, Sultan, it's been a privilege to meet you, mate. Thank you, sir. British people, I'm here in your town. Come out and check out my website, www.thesultanofska. See? Check out my website. I'm on the social media, internet, Twitter. I'm there. Sultan, good to see you, my friend. Thank you!